Hello, welcome to Yunnan province, the home of Pua Ti. Uh, we're on Jingmai Mountain. Um, we're about 1,200 meters up at the moment, and we're going to visit our tea, uh, one of the tea plantations, um, the wild forests, about 1,500 meters up at the top of Jingmai Mountain. As you can see around me, there's lots of cloud cover, lots of mist, which is exactly what you'd expect and exactly what you'd want for, for good uh, pua tea. So join us as we go and find some good pua. ตามเสียบแสบแสบดาวเย็นไปจนดันคืนคอยที่ปั้มปากโซนน้องๆไก่ส้มตําหนุ่มแต่สีรูปหล่อและหนุ่มสามล้อมาอุดหนุนประจํา
This begins the process of developing flavor as the leaves lose some moisture and release volatile oils that react with the air and each other. Then the leaves are heated in small batches. Modern pu'er production uses large spinning heated drums, but this is the traditional way of doing things. A wood fire is lit and the wok is brought to about 130 degrees Celsius before adding the leaves. The purpose of the heating is to slow down the oxidation process through the deactivation of enzymes in the leaf and water reduction. The leaves have to be moved around constantly by hand for about 30 minutes to stop them from scorching. It is very hard and hot work. The pile of leaves waiting to be heated must be raked constantly to ensure even withering and a consistent flavour. After half an hour of heating, the leaves are rolled to release all the tea oils for a delicious tea. Afterwards, the leaves are sun-dried slowly under shade before being sorted. So this is the sorting process, and this beautiful lady here is removing any of the larger leaves which they don't want. So this is the, this is the, the leaf that's left over. Um, so this is the, the leaf that they're removing from the tea. It's all hand sorted. You can see she's very skilled at her job, very fast. Um, and um, she'll sit for many hours here sorting the tea. From there, the leaf will be sold on to the uh, factory who's going to make it into pu'er cakes. If the pu'er is going to be cooked, then the tea master would cover piles of the dry leaves with about 30% water in a hot room. This causes tea fermentation and can take about one to two months. Here, we are making raw cakes that can be drunk fresh or aged naturally. We're compressing our own uh, pu'er cakes and I just wanted to show you, if you look at these, you can see it looks like a, a kind of um, a, a pile of leaves, but it, it really doesn't show the level of detail that they've gone into to pick these, to pick these uh, uh, leaves. So you can see if you actually individualize them and take them out, you can see it's one bud and one leaf and quite a long stem. So one bud, one leaf and quite a long stem and they all have the same, the same type. So when you compress them into a cake, it looks like it's a bit of a mess of leaves, but actually it's all very, very carefully chosen leaves. Pu'er cakes are the usual way of buying pu'er, as they're convenient for storage and aging, although loose pu'er is becoming available. To make the cakes, they steam the leaves to soften and add moisture. I suspect that this extra burst of moisture is one of the reasons why cake-aged tea is considered to be superior to pu'er which is aged loose, as it locks in some of the moisture for fermentation. The cake shape is molded by hand. I can imagine that this process is the same as it has been for thousands of years. It is always reassuring when I witness producers doing things by hand, as I can trust that they are not making commodity production line tea. There are a few different shapes of pu'er cake, and this is the classic bing shape. There are others like the tour or bird's nest shape. The cakes are given another quick steam before being compressed under heavy stones by body weight. So we're compressing pu'er. Hey. It's good for your exercise as well. It helps you keep slim. <laughs> good every day for five hours a day, ten hours a day. We're just tasting pu'er tea, obviously, um, and I just wanted to show you different types that we have here just to see the kind of process that we go through when selecting our teas. So this tea here is a 2014, 2014 okay. and you can see that it's using quite large leaf. Right, so you can see how large the leaves are here. So that's 2014 cooked. This is a 2014 cooked as well. You can see that it includes much more buds. Yeah, so this is generally considered to be a high quality tea and the flavor is much longer lasting in the mouth. So it's, 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 it's actually a stronger tea. It looks much darker than the one before, which is surprising because it's full of buds, but it's because there's more nutrients in the buds um, and in the younger leaves and therefore produces a darker tea. This one here, we're very privileged that they broke this one out for us to try. 
This is an old raw tea. So this is a Lao Shang Cha, 2003. And uh, it's not just the age of the tea in terms of when it was picked that's important. It's also the age of the tea tree. And this one's a thousand years old. So it's a thousand year old tea tree aged for 12 years. And it's uh, delicious. Um, so these are some of the, some of the Puer teas that we're tasting today. Um, there are a whole range of different blends and different ages that you can obviously try. Um, this is my favorite. It's probably the most expensive, we will find out. Um, but I just thought I'd share that with you. So this is what all of the work is for. A cup of artisan, ancient tree, raw Puer. Notice the richness of nutrients floating in the brew. It was absolutely delicious.